Hi, this is Joel White um, with the Association of International Certified Professional Accountants. I'm the Senior Director of Internal Audit and I'm here today with Jay Overcash, who's the Director of Information Security here. Uh, as many of you guys know, this month is Cybersecurity Month and we are working to uh, make sure we're educating our members and students. And uh, if you recall, we put out a queue for questions uh, asking you all what is top of mind for you in your day-to-day -day life. I know many of you are responsible for protecting uh, both your firms, yourself, in many cases your parents, um, as well as kind of your day-to-day -day, uh, jobs and your clients. Um, so with that, we asked you all what questions were top of mind related to cybersecurity, and we gathered those, uh, and we're gonna kind of walk through them and you know go through those responses. Uh, again, I know many of you all are watching this for the first time, so if you think of additional questions, feel free to post them, and we'll try to get to those following this. Um, Cybersecurity is obviously a big topic. Uh, it's prevalent, it's impacting a lot of businesses. I believe some of the stats are, you know, there's a cybersecurity attack every 39 seconds. Um, you know, many CPA firms and law firms are being targeted based on the type of information they have. Um, and, and as many of you have seen based on some of the breaches that have happened, uh, there's a huge financial implication uh, to organizations should they be breached. So. Lots of things we can do from both protecting our organizations uh, as well as responding should a breach happen. Um, so with that, uh, I'm going to jump some of the questions and we'll, we'll get started. Um, obviously, just to start it out and set the, set the you know, pace of what it is, what, Jay, you know, what is cybersecurity and how would you kind of define that? Yeah, so cybersecurity at its core is, just, is the same thing as IT security. So just in recent years, people have started using the, the term cybersecurity instead. Um, but in general, it's protecting yourself online or your computer systems or any data that you have. Uh, and, and there can be a variety of ways in which to do that. And so we'll, we'll probably talk about that in some of the other questions. Uh, one of the other questions we got in are what, are, what are some of the areas that you see people having the most trouble with today? Yeah, um, a, a lot of the areas that people have trouble with today are actually more the simple task um, when we talk about that from security. It's patching systems on a regular basis. So patching systems will help people um, ensure that, that there's no vulnerabilities there that people can gain access to. Um, the other thing is just inappropriate system access. A lot of folks um, don't look at who has access to their systems on any kind of recurring basis. And as people move and change jobs, change roles, things of that nature, they have this elevated access over time. Uh, probably the, there's a third factor in there as well, and, and that is protecting your actual passwords. So traditionally, um, people use passwords to log in and access systems, um, and not enough people are, are leveraging multi-factor authentication, which is one method in which you can secure your accounts more, more um, readily. No, and just to add to that, you've definitely seen over the years, there's a, you know, sprawl in technology and everyone's adding additional systems. Um, we're not always retiring some of the older antiquated systems as we get there. And as that continues to grow, it's kind of hard to manage that inventory of systems and, and your, 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 your points of entry uh, continue to kind of expand. Um, you know, I keep hearing about passwords aren't secure. Um, you know, is this, is this true at this day and age or what are some of the things impacting passwords uh, that people should be thinking about? Yeah, um, that is a, a partially a true statement. So passwords traditionally are not secure and they're not secure because of the way in which people create them. Um, in general, the longer a password is, the more secure it is, the more complex it is to break, um, the more difficult it is for other, someone else to guess that based on just knowing some personal information about you or whatnot. Um, Microsoft has announced that they do want to eliminate passwords going forward. Um, they are not the only ones. A lot of other tech companies have also started going that route. Um, with that being in mind, passwords are not going to disappear in the next couple of years. They'll just be supplemented. I think a lot of pe folks can um, see the experience here if they have an iPhone or something like that. It's switching to biometrics where you just use your thumb for authentication or um, I think on some of the newest versions of, of iPhones and, and other technologies, you'll do facial recognition and stuff as well. Um, and part of the reason is this just much harder to fake that data than it is to, to break, break a password. Uh, and I saw an interesting fact that uh, I believe it's 77% of people reuse their password. So when they're going to their U Yahoo, Google accounts, uh, they're then sometimes reusing those on their corporate accounts 
their banking accounts and things like that. Um, and so if one of those sites gets gets hacked or compromised, you're kind of increasing your risk for that that what you thought was a benign password uh, to be used in a way that could damage you. Um, obviously, the cloud has been around for quite some time, but there's still some industries that are, are moving there at a little slower pace. But uh, you know, some of the big hesitation around moving to the cloud is the security around it. Um, I guess, what's your perspective on the cloud at this day and age? Yeah, uh, that's very interesting. I hear the same thing very often. Um, so I guess just kind of level set, uh, the cloud is nothing more than someone else's data center. So traditionally, people have kept their data within their company's walls in their own data center. Now people are moving towards other people's data centers, whether it be Microsoft, Google, Amazon, or a myriad of other um, players out there. And so really the same rules apply to the cloud that happened on your own data center. Um, the difference here is some of the technology wordings changed, some of the capabilities have changed, but uh, in general, you still need firewalls, you still need basic security to protect your data in the cloud. Um, the one thing I will say is, is most of your cloud providers have a lot more resources to throw at security. So in a lot of ways, they can offer better capabilities from a security standpoint than most companies can on premise. Yep. Um, you know, the, a lot of people use antivirus, particularly on their, you know, their personal computers. Um, this question was, you know, is the in installation of AV uh, enough from a security perspective as far as protecting yourself? While it's a good start, it is it is definitely not enough. Um, I, I read reports every now and then, and it, it ranges wildly between 50% effective and 80% effective for antivirus. The general theme is people need to practice what's called defense in depth, and they can start with um, antivirus as one of those things. Uh, another mechanism could be to turn on a firewall if you have that capability as well. But in general, you never want to rely on a single security method or control to protect all of your data because there's always some way around something. Um, you know, um, different controls are designed for different aspects, whether it's protecting an account, a device, um, or some other mechanism that might come in. Yeah. Uh, you see ransomware a lot in the news. I know it's impacted quite a few healthcare organizations. Um, what are some best practices to kind of ensure you're not going to get hit by ransomware? Um, the best practice to recover from ransomware, and I'll start there, is to have backups of your data. Um, you never want to rely on a single location for your data, because uh, if you do get hit with one of the ransomware attacks, you're not certain that you're going to get it back. So if your data is that valuable, you need to back it up. Um, to prevent it in the first place, a lot of the ways um, ransomware gets in is through unpatched systems. So we've talked about that previously. So making sure you stay up to date on all, the, all, on all of those patches. The second way is through click to links in emails. So a lot of people will receive an email, a phishing email, saying, you know, access to your bank account or check on this package. You know, th those are some general themes. And when people click on that link, it tends to launch the actual um, virus and then encrypt, goes out and encrypts all your files. So first thing, don't click on any of those links. Um, if you have questions, there, there are ways that you can check the validity of those emails. And then second of all, try and patch your systems as much as you can. And then the final thing, back up all of your data and keep that off site, not connected to your systems. Because if, if it is connected, then the backups are also gonna get encrypted as well. Yep, so. no, great points. Um, we also got quite a few questions that were more firm specific. Um, and I know many of you are working to advance your cybersecurity practices in your firms, um, which is a great opportunity in this market given, you know, I think people look to accounting firms uh, to better uh, themselves and whether you're partnering with a security provider or in many cases, uh, these skill sets are something you can provide yourself. It's an opportunity uh, for you to grow your practice. Uh, so some of those questions are, you know, a sole proprietor, uh, how much per month does it roughly cost a sole proprietor to kind of protect uh, their cyber information? I imagine many, many of you are tax uh, proprietors, tax information is highly targeted uh, by cyber attacks given the value and the capability to turn that into a financial return. Um, so, so what are some ways that the smaller firms can kind of protect themselves? Yeah, well, it, it's hard to put a price on, on security. Uh, I think one of the things as CPAs is you're, they're, they're well versed in the risk aspect. Um, and so understanding the cost versus the, uh, the risk of losing the data versus the cost of protecting it. And that's the first thing I would advise anyone to do is kind of look at how that, that equation and see 
if you're if the data that you have was going to be compromised, how costly would that be? And I think that justifies adding more security into into the regimen. Um, the great thing though is most of the core things that people can do to protect the data do not cost a lot of money. Um, we mentioned antivirus earlier. I, I know I said that it wasn't uh, the the single solution. That is a start. It does protect against a lot of known um, viruses and malicious software. Patching systems doesn't cost any money. Most of the vendors push out patches on a monthly basis and you can just get in the routine of applying those. Multi-factor authentication is offered by most vendors, especially in the cloud environment at this point in time. It's just a matter of electing to choose that option. Um, and with multi-factor authentication, you can get the second factor in a number of ways, whether it's a pin or an email, something like that, besides just your password. Um, and then just being more aware, educating yourself. Um, there's lots of videos online, lots of other opportunities to learn more about cybersecurity, what not to do, what you should do. Um, and then there are, depending on what um, services you actually leverage to provide your IT, they usually have some advanced security features as well. Yeah, and, and another key is kind of knowing where your data is and your most valuable data in particular and kind of isolating that to the degree possible um, so that you know, you're protecting a small area versus your entire process. Uh, another question that came in is, my firm is trying to expand into the cybersecurity place. Uh, any thoughts on, on where to begin? Uh, and this one I gave some thought. Uh, you know, I've, I've worked in public accounting in the advisory section. I think a big area where you are seeing a lot of growth is the advisory assurance services, uh, whether that be your SOC report, SOC 1s and SOC 2s as well as uh, your SOC for cybersecurity uh, that was recently released this past year. Um, you know, a lot of people are using vendors to provide those key services and they're looking to accounting firms to be able to provide some assurance that the vendors that they depend on are kind of reliable and providing the security and availability that they need. Um, another area where <clears throat> a lot of firms uh, can provide some value is internal audit augmentation. A lot of internal audit shops, uh, you know, there's a shortage in the IT audit field in particular and IT security, and there's lots of peaks and valleys uh, in organizations depending on the time of year. And and I can, you know, being an internal audit, we definitely use that augmentation for those peaks and valleys. Um, another area is uh, IT controls assessments, mm -hmm. um, you know, providing that expertise for the security controls that a company relies on. Obviously, going you know, IT general controls, which are a key component of the financial statement audit, um, but as well as moving into the operational areas, uh, those key kind of IT and security controls that could impact uh, organizations if they're not uh, being protected properly. Anything else? Yeah, no, I, I agree. I guess uh, looking at it from two different perspectives, so one being a, a small or medium-sized firm and trying to build the business and, and kind of get it out, out there, I think I would look to partner with maybe a, a very specialized, neat boutique security company. Um, they have the skill sets in a lot of places and can dive extremely deep. Um, and they also uh, tend to be focused in processes and controls and things of that nature as well. And I think at least from, a, from an onboarding standpoint, I think it'd be really good for a CPA firm to start learning some of those techniques and some of that information as they are building their practice. And then they can generally hire staff in-house if they want to or continue with that same arrangement. I think that's a good idea. Um, from an internal standpoint, as, as being on the operations side of security, I agree with what you said um, from internal audit. I mean, we leverage uh, your team and, and some others uh, as well to help look at our controls and, and give a different perspective because sometimes as you're in the day-to-day -day mix, you, you kind of forget how things are, you, uh, operate or you take assumptions that things are still functioning the way they should and just having that second set of eyes or another way of thinking or viewing um, the problem is very beneficial. And, and kind of to follow up on that, um, the question came in, how does cybersecurity affect internal controls in the company's financials? Um, you know, I think there's, internal controls have been a key portion of company financials for quite some time. You know, obviously there was Sarbanes-Oxley, but even before that, um, you've continued to see the evolution of the importance of IT internal controls, given the dependency that companies place on their internal, you know, their systems to run properly. Mm -hmm. um, so even beyond IT general controls, kind of like I mentioned, you know, the operational side, the vendor management side, all those play a key uh, 
function in making sure those are working properly um, for that organizations to run uh, efficiently and effectively. Uh, and even for public companies, you've seen a lot of uh, guidance being provided. I know the P PCAOB as well as the SEC has continued to evolve um, their cybersecurity stance and provided additional guidance. I know they're now requiring you know, footnotes and things like that for breaches. Uh, and, and given the impact that data breaches are, are having on public companies, I wouldn't be surprised if you continue to see more of that. Um, and with that, I mean, I, I think those are the questions that we received. Uh, continue to ask questions and you can post them on the bottom. Uh, a couple things I'll point out is the, the association does have a cybersecurity page. Uh, we do produce a variety of certificates and learning programs as well as uh, we do webcasts uh, and put out content there for you all uh, to make sure you're learning uh, and continuing to upskill your capabilities in cybersecurity. So with that, thank you very much.